and I'll walk you guys through an example on how to use it. You should have, and I'll just show you an example real quick on exactly how you can put in floors and how you can put in roofs. The, the bright side of the program and the downsides of the program. This is meant for homes that are uh, moderate in complexity and down. Everything that is a really cut up home, it won't do. It is, if you have your trust estimating tab open, all of this is basically, you know, if you have a trust that has commons gables, uh, structural gables, scissors, vaults, a partial vault is a half span vault. A uh, tray is based on a typical uh, a typical 12 foot tray uh, in a in a home. A hip truss for doing uh, all of your step down hips, attic trusses, monos, girders, flat trusses, and then you're also going to see that I have a couple of span tools in here, and I'll show you how that works here in just a second. Your, this will be able to do 70 to 80 percent of your single-family residential homes. It's based off of standard loading conditions. When you get into certain areas that have huge snow loads, you'll have to calculate that into your top corn loading because I have it calculating up to 50 pounds on your top cord load. Okay. We'll go to a roof. That like here, you have just a simple roof roof layout here that they're over framing. Let me see if I got a uh, elevation view. That they've got the dormer that they're basically putting on up front. We can add the uh, porch trusses, and they've got commons coming through here to put in roof trusses. Once your page is scaled, that you can come and the roof is exactly the same way with the span tool. Everything that you see as a segment needs to be entered in manually as single trusses. These are uh, span tools and I'll show you how each one of them works. That let's say we have a common uh, eight pitch, all of this just so that you know on the span tool, everything's available to you through here. If you have a long run of anything, that's pitches. I have it up to 12, exactly the same way that you got an eight. Your heel, I have this as a standard heel at six inches. Everything is calculating to six inches and above. Let's say that you had high heels to where you have a 12 inch heel on here. Your spacing, exactly the same way top cord, bottom cord, your overhangs, and your plies. And make sure that you put it in the roof tab. And then it's exactly the same way. You go to your overhang line and you map out the trusses that you want to put in. And we'll just kind of play with this one a little bit so that you can see uh, exactly how it works. And then you're going to have the area that you're going to be using for your trusses. Click the direction that you want them to go, and now they're in. This one added one right over the wall. I'm going to delete that because we're going to put in the gables. Anytime you delete anything inside of a tool, you have to click on it and hit regenerate total. And then we'll put in gables. Okay. And then that would be your roof system for up here. We'll put in the porch trusses here. And we can run those as monos through here. And let's say they're just the standard heel.
and then you have them in here. We'll go back and add our gables. We can do it a couple of different ways. Let me cancel out of this real quick. That here you can add the mono individually. You can add it individually like that. Or what you can do is if you already have it established, you can copy and paste them. Paste into the same section. Regenerate your total, and now you got them in there. Okay. Now let's say that we had a valley that came over the top of this. You got an eight here. Let's say that we're going to put in a valley. You can come on here. Now the valley is the pitch of the return gable. You can click your base span, and then now if we and I'm using this as an example. Obviously this one doesn't have it, but I'm using this as an example that this would be a return gable. I can click on that. I can draw in my valley. And it'll throw it in there for you. Now, another thing that you need to know is if you have a truss that comes up that is less than one or less than two feet, it will give you an error. So anything that is less than two feet, you have to delete. Two feet or more, you're fine. So this would be all of our trusses for this. We go to our estimating tab, and I'm going to delete out just for uh, just for clarity for you guys all of the floors. But in your estimating tab under your roof, you're going to have all the commons that we put in, the gable. You're going to see all the monos that we put in, and all of the valleys and all of the nomenclature. You need to click on the roof tab. That'll go through the quantity, the plies, the pitch, span, heels. Now you'll notice that the valleys have no heels, the no overhangs, and you'll see that the overhangs are in here and what lumber we have. When we go to the reports tab, we can go on the roof trust report. We can, let me close, uh, let me expand this out. And then you'll see all of the information with the nomenclature that we're looking for. Same thing. If you see something with the little box up in the top, that's going to ask to be converted to a number. So we're going to highlight on the cells that are actual numbers, convert to a number. Then we can take this. Copy it. We can go into our template, go to the roof input tab, paste values, and you'll see how each one of the trusses and the quantities, it'll give you the board footage per truss and the total board footage for based upon the quantities. Break it out exactly the same way that we had talked about. One thing you'll see here is reaction at bearings. This is just off of standard loading. You can change the loading right here and it'll change the board footage. And because I've got tables and calculations in the program in the background, all of the intelligence is in the program. It's not in plan swift. And based upon your standard top cord loading, whether it's 2010, 10, 30, 10, 10, 40, 50, uh, it works exactly the same way and it'll populate all of this information. I had somebody ask me about the bearings. This is just a standard, uh, uh, basically, deviation for that area that the truss is covering. And then if you had a girder, you can actually tell it what the uh, girder span carried is, and based upon the span of the girder and how many truss, it'll calculate out how many trusses it's carrying. 
based upon this span and add that into the reaction so you can size your hangers easily. If you don't want to use it, it's no big deal. It'll tell you the total board footage for the job and give you an approximate material cost as well. The gables are figured non-sheathed at two foot on center pinions through there. Okay, and then the same thing. Now, one thing you'll see is I've got this, uh, uh, the production labor is blocked out. That's coming from your facility information tab. If you just want to put it all at 18 cents or 20 cents for your facility to estimate, just change all of these to 20 and that's, uh, I, that'll calculate it out at 20. You can ca you can change any one of these to give you your cost of goods sold and all of your uh, technical costs, uh, basically your facility costs through here to be able to estimate out of the job. Some people, like I said, some people use the estimating tool for uh, quotes and take quotes right out of here and that's why I have these quotes in here, quote pages. And like I said, you can just clean them up by deleting the excess lines. And then everything will be on one page. And then you can put in, if you want to use this, great. And you can put the stock logo up here and you can send this directly out. And I, I'll tell you how uh, most people, because I use this myself, how most people do the layout. Because I send a layout and the estimate, estimate along. But here's all the information that you need. If you know the board footage and the material cost, even if you don't know the rest of this, it'll, uh, you'll be able to estimate using your system exactly how, uh, how you want to do it. 